friends, today we will have a presentation on aerotropes and the cardiovascular system. So we all are using the aerotropes in the critical care settings to support uh, hemodynamics. So before beginning the topic aerotropes, we should understand the cardiovascular system. So then only we will get the exact picture how these aerotropes are working on the cardiovascular system and what is the expected outcome and what are the precautions to take care of while using these aerotropes. So let's begin the presentation. To understand the aerotropes and their use, there must be an understanding of the cardiovascular system. So this is the diagrammatic representation of the heart and the ECG. This is the basic idea. So we have uh, four chambers in the heart, right atrium, right ventricle, and left atrium, left ventricle, and pulmonary arteries and veins, aorta, superior and inferior vena cava, and the tricuspid valve in the right side, and the mitral valve in the left side, and the aortic valve. So in the ECG, these are the basic components, the P, QRS, and the T, the ST segment as well. The P wave represents the atrial depolarization, means the atrial contraction. The QRS represents ventricular depolarization, means the ventricular contraction. The ST segment, this is the transient period, the fraction second between the ventricular contraction and the relaxation. Okay, the, the position in the ECG itself, which is uh, explaining the QRS, the end of the QRS, this is the S and the T. The T is ventricular repolarization, means ventricular relaxation. The time between this ventricular contraction and relaxation is called ST segment. So what is blood pressure? We all know when the heart is pumping, the maximum pressure measured in the arteries is called systolic pressure. And when the ventricle relaxes, the artery pressure relaxes, and this is called diastolic pressure. So while pumping the heart, the maximum pressure exerted on the wall of the artery is called systolic pressure, the high pressure. And when the ventricle relaxes, uh, the, the pressure will drop. So this, the lowest pressure is measured as diastolic pressure. So we measure like both systolic and diastolic and the mean artery pressure as well. This mean artery pressure, it is determined by the cardiac output and the systemic vascular resistance. The, the main point is the blood flow to the tissue is crucially depends on the mean artery pressure and how it is calculated. Let's see. So this is calculated by adding diastolic pressure and one third of the pulse pressure. The pulse pressure means the difference between the diastolic and the systolic pressure. Okay. So we, call, uh, we can calculate like mean arterial pressure is equal to diastolic pressure plus one third of the pulse pressure. Otherwise, the mean arterial pressure is equal to diastolic pressure plus one third of systolic pressure minus diastolic pressure. This is the pulse pressure. So for example, if the uh, BP is 120-80, how much will be the mean arterial pressure? So diastolic pressure is 80, that is 80 plus one third of the systolic minus diastolic pressure. So it is 120 minus 80 will come. It is 40. So one third of 40, it's around uh, 13 point something. So 13.34 like that. So the diastolic pressure is 80 plus this 13.3. So it is 93.3. This is the around 90 plus is the mean arterial pressure for the 120 ATP. BP. Okay, so next the cardiac output. It is the amount of blood pumped out from the ventricle in one minute. And this is determined by the stroke volume times the heart rate. The stroke volume is the amount of blood coming out from the ventricle in one contraction. Okay, so the cardiac output in one minute, the stroke volume is in one contraction. Okay, it's around 70 to 80, 70, 80 ml. So what affects the cardiac output? The systemic vascular resistance. So how much resistance to uh, overcome by the heart while pumping the blood? 
circulatory volume uh, if there is hypovolemia it will affect the cardiac output the cardiac output will drop and the contractility of the myocardium if the contractility of myocardium is compromised by any disease condition or any other condition the cardiac output will drop and if the patient is on sedation of course we know that all the muscles will be relaxed and it will also affect the cardiac output and the pain the pain if the patient is in pain it will uh, increase the heart rate and uh, let's see the formula the stroke volume times the heart rate don't think like if the heart rate is high the stroke uh, the cardiac output will go high no it's not like that if the heart rate is high the the ventricle will not get enough time to uh, relax and get all the blood inside it uh, as we uh, discussed it's around 70 80 ml should go out from the uh, ventricle while uh, one contraction so if there is no 70 ml inside how much the stroke volume stroke volume will drop and it will uh, affect the cardiac output as well okay so the heart rate any changes in the heart rate like tachycardia or bradycardia will affect the cardiac output fever distress uh, pain etc can cause tachycardia tachycardia may give insufficient time for diastolic feeling this is what i explained <coughs> the next stroke volume it is the amount of blood pumped out from the ventricle in each heartbeat okay this is determined by the preload after load and the cardiac contractility let's see in details what is preload it is the degree of myocardial stretch at the end of diastole we will see in uh, detail that is the amount of blood available for expulsion by the myocardium while system while contracting uh, the ventricle how much the blood available in the ventricle for one uh, uh, pumping okay this is the preload so preload is affected by any changes to the circulatory blood volume like dehydration hemorrhage hypovolemia as we uh, discussed before it, if there is hypovolemia the cardiac output will drop so it means the the preload will go down and it will affect eventually the cardiac output any changes to the blood returning to the heart like vasoconstriction or vasodilation any changes to the ventricular filling time like heart failure tamponade uh, changes in the heart rate tachy or bradi it will also affect the cardiac output the greater the preload the greater the stroke volume okay if the amount of blood inside the ventricle for each pump like that is stroke volume so amount of uh, this is the preload is good enough the stroke volume will go uh, high and uh, it will be good enough and the overall result is the greater cardiac output and the cardiac contractility this is the ability of the myocardium to contract effectively it may be reduced by the myocardial uh, edema decrease ventricular compliance maybe uh, from the cardiomyopathy or the post cardiac surgery the myocardium can be further compromised by the volume or pressure overload which causes ventricular dilatation and hypertrophy ischemia like that so what is afterload the resistance uh, the resistance what the heart is experiencing while one cardiac one pumping see uh, the resistance the ventricle must overcome in order to move the blood in the pulmonary artery and aorta so this is this can be divided in systemic vascular resistance and pulmonary uh, vascular resistance so if there is too much resistance or well, the heart is okay but the the system full the all systemic vasculars uh are resisting i mean the can it, uh, it may be because of the drug effect like uh, for example if we are using the vasoconstrictive medications the vasoconstriction will occur and there will be uh, high resistance in the uh, way the arteries 
So if the heart is pumping and the arteries are not ready to accommodate that kind of uh, force, so what will happen? Uh, this the after load will go high, so it will eventually affect the cardiac output. <coughs> Increasing systemic vascular resistance improve mean artery repression, but may reduce the cardiac output. We need to keep it in mind. It's not only the figures in the monitor. If you use high vasopressor, we may see the high uh, figures in the monitor, but patient may not get good cardiac output and good tissue perfusion. <coughs> Increasing sy systemic vascular resistance may need it in vasodilated patient in order to maintain mean artery pressure at a level able to perfuse. But if cardiac output is reduced, this will have a negative effect by further reducing the cardiac output while increasing the BP. Okay, I hope it is clear. The greater the preload, the greater the stroke volume, and the, therefore the greater the cardiac output. This is the key point. So decrease in afterload, this is increase in cardiac output. If the afterload, afterload means the resistance, how much the heart should go uh, to overcome uh, to uh, circulate the blood through the body. So increase in preload means every time the ventricle is filling with a good amount so the stroke volume will go up eventually the heart, the whole cardiac output will go up go uh, will improve the increase in the ventricular function the contractility of the heart ventricle uh, the myocardium as well the it will also improve the cardiac output so we have discussed the cardiovascular system. So now uh, let's see the cardiovascular support and the inotrop. So what is inotrop? It's an agent which increases, uh, increase or decrease the force of muscular contraction of the heart. It acts on alpha, beta one and beta two receptors of the cell. Alpha, it is uh, peripheral vascular construction, increases systemic vascular resistance. Beta one, uh, receptor is increased heart rate, AV conduction velocity, and ventricular contractility. Beta 2 is uh, for peripheral vasodilation and bronchodilation. So, inodrop and their reactions uh, with the, these receptors alpha, beta 1, beta 2. Uh, dobutamine, we have uh, no action in the alpha. We have uh, dobutamine will affect on the beta 1 receptors and beta 2 is uh, uh, low activity and dopamine is uh, low activity in the alpha and beta 1 is the main uh, area of uh, reaction and beta 2 also is uh, low activity. Adrenaline it is, main in, uh, it is more readily active in the alpha receptors and beta 1 is the main uh, area of action and beta 2 also moderately affected and uh, noradrenaline it is more in the alpha and beta 1 is slightly affected and there is no activity in the beta 2 we have positive inotropes negative inotropes so what is positive inotropes these are known as sympathomimetic drugs they stimulate the contraction directly affecting the heart rate, peripheral perfusion, BP, and urine output. For example, dopamine, dopamine, and adrenaline. So negative inotropes. These drugs block beta adrenal receptors in the heart, uh, peripheral vessels, bronchi, pancreas, and liver. For example, labetalol, propanol. Means it will block the beta receptor. Uh, so while blocking the beta 1 the heart rate will go down and peripheral vessels will be affected bronchi and pancreas and liver will be affected so vasopressors means vasoconstrictive drugs these drugs act on alpha 1 adrenergic receptors by increasing peripheral vascular tone and increasing peripheral vascular resistance which leads to increased blood pressure for example adrenaline and noradrenaline most drugs used in the cardiovascular support in the critical care display both inotropic and vasopressor activities. 
indication for use. To maximize the cardiac output and oxygen delivery to the tissues when other measures have failed to achieve this effect. They should be titrated to provide maximum therapeutic effect with the minimal cytotoxic effects. Every drug has toxic effects. So you should take care of, we should give a minimal amount of medicine to give the tissue perfusion. Uh, there is a very rapid onset and offset, for, except for mildrenum, which is about 20 minutes onset and half life of 4 to 6 hours. Even we withdraw the med we discontinue the medicine, the effect will be there for 6 hours, 4 to 6 hours. The down regulation the critically ill patients can become resistant to effect of uh, pressure agents. So that's why uh, we need to. Uh, Titrate the medicine as soon as possible to maintain the cardiac output. Uh, the, this is the more prevalent those with the septic shock patients. So the, our aim to optimize distribution of cardiac output, use minimum effective uh, dose to achieve desired outcome, to wean and discontinue to avoid undesirable side effects. Flight and fight response. In response to stress or fear, our bodies automatically prepare themselves for fighting or fleeing. So that's we all know that. This is an autonom autonomic response. The sympathetic impulse initiate an emergency system. The ongoing sympathetic sickness increases, increases greatly. The body prepares to expand maximum energy by increasing heart rate, increased contractility, dilatation of coronary vessels, uh, constriction of blood vessels and, uh, and digestive and other organs, contraction of spleen and other blood vessels, dilatation of airway, increase the depth of respiration, increase sweating, increase uh, conversion of uh, glycogen to glucose. So increase of, of we all know that if we are in uh, stress, our heart rate will uh, go up to to improve the cardiac function, to reach out all the tissue well, very well uh, perfusion. So increase contractility, of course, if the contractility of the myocardium, it will also improve the cardiac output and will, our muscles will get a good blood flow. The dilatation of coronary vessels to improve, to support the myocardium and the constriction of blood vessels in the digestive system and other organs means uh, we can get more volume to the heart, back and other muscles, other area will get enough uh, blood uh, for fighting. And dilatation of airways to improve our uh, breathing and the oxygenation, increase depth of respiration of course, uh, increase sweating to cool down our body, increase con conversion of glycogen to glucose, we need more glucose to make more energy. This is what happening uh, during the fight or flight response. Sympathetic efforts, uh, sympathetic effectors, uh, such as the heart, smooth muscles, uh, glands uh, have receptors for noradrenaline. Both adrenaline and noradrenaline can bind to the receptors for sympathetic effectors uh, to prolong and enhance the effect of sympathetic stimulation by the autonomic nervous system. In simple terms, the body produces adrenaline, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Normally, this is, the con this is controlled and can increase or decrease according to the body's need. Okay? In stress, the production increases to provide the fight or flight response. The body's coping mechanism can only compromise for so long uh, before the body's equilibrium is changed and become unable to maintain the normostasis. So improvement in cardiac function at this time can be brought up by the dopamine, dobutamine and adrenaline. So this will uh, increase heart rate, cardiovascular conduction velocity and the ventricular control activity. So when a patient presents sick, what will happen to the patient? When a patient presents as uh, very sick, the fight or flight response is usually running at full tilt. Okay? They are compensating and running at the maximum output. Lower blood pressure is very late sign of uh, how sick they are. 
fluid boluses may help to uh, Im, uh, help to the pa help the patient to immediate situation by increasing the circulatory volume. Uh, when you give this patient any sort of uh, sedative or anesthetic agent for intubation, you are immediately taking away their fight or flight response. So we need to take care of that point. So it is this response that has been maintaining uh, their heart rate and blood pressure. And once you can, you take away the drive, the patient's cardiovascular function may compromise. So their heart rate may fall, their BP will fall, and you will have an emergency situation ahead. So before giving sedation, so we need to take care of that, uh, think about that point. So we are taking away their fight or flight response. So we need to have the emergency drug tray beside the patient to before giving the sedation for intubation. If considering intervention and ventilation in a sick patient, blood pressure is lower, uh, it is wise to consider making a dinotrose prior to the intubation. That's what we all are doing in the critical setup, but just for the reminder. So if inotrope, uh, inotropes are being considered, then the patient will need a lot of monitoring and constant review. For inotropes, open adrenaline and dopamine to start them. Once the situation is stabilized, then consider uh, rationalizing the inotropes, but initially the adrenaline will increase the patient's heart rate and cardiac output. Uh, and the dopamine will increase the BP and improve cardiac output. Noradrenaline may also be used, uh, as a, uh, but the dobutamine should only be initiated once the circulatory volume or CVP is adequate. So let's see adrenaline, epinephrine. The ad action of adrenaline, it acts directly on the alpha and beta receptors. Immediate, uh, imitates the most uh, of SNS except for the face and sweat glands, strengthen myocardial contraction, increase cardiac output and heart rate, increase systemic vascular resistance, increases uh, coronary perfusion, this increase myocardial oxygenation, increase systolic but may decrease diastolic pressure, cause uh, brachial smooth muscle relaxation, Constrict the bron uh, bronchial arteries, uh, arterioles and uh, inhibits the histamine release. This reduces the congestion and edema, uh, increases uh, tidal volume and vital capacity. Constrict arterioles in the skin, mucous membrane and the kidneys. Dilates skeletal muscle blood vessels, raising blood sugar by, more, uh, by promoting the conversion of uh, glycogen and Inhibit insulin release, CNS stimulation. Uses. We use adrenaline use in cardiac arrest, symptomatic, uh, symptomatic bradycardia, uh, poor systemic perfusion, hypotension with the good CVP and the stable rhythm, anaphylactic reactions, acute asthmatic attack, uh, temporary release of uh, bronchospasm. What are the precautions or side effects for this adrenaline? So it can cause uh, metabolic acidosis, tachyarrhythmias, hypertension, hyperglycemia, increased myocardial oxygen demand, high doses uh, can lead to severe uh, peripheral vasoconstriction and poor perfusion. Uh, infiltration cause necrosis and ischemia, urinary retention, bronchial and pulmonary edema, systematic reactions, like uh, nervousness, restlessness, anxiety, nausea, sweating, vomiting, weakness, dizziness. So not adrenaline, not epinephrine. What are the actions? It acts directly on alpha adrenergic receptors, acts little on beta receptors except on the heart. Main therapeutic effect uh, is vasoconstriction and cardiac stimulation. It reduces blood flow to the kidney other vital organs, skin and skeletal muscles, peripheral vasoconstriction, aerotropic stimulation of the heart, which includes uh, increased systolic and diastolic pressure, myocardial oxygenation, coronary artery blood flow. It can cause bradycardia, causes less CNS stimulation and less effects on metabolism and, uh, than adrenaline. Large doses cause glycogenolysis and inhibits insulin release. So what are the uses? 
restore BP in acute state, primarily used uh, in shock, cardiac arrest, useful in uh, hyper uh, cyanotic episodes like uh, fallouts, tricuspid atresia, to overcome peripheral vasodilation. Useful in pulmonary vascular disease to overcome peripheral vas uh, vasodilation and sepsis with sig significant vasodilation. So what are the precautions or side effects of uh, norepinephrine? Significantly increases myocardial overload, reduces peripheral uh, tissue perfusion, may cause hypoxia or hypercapnia and cause uh, hypertension. Bradycardia, arrhythmias, respiratory difficulties, headache, tissue necrosis at the infusion site, and CNS uh, affects like uh, tremors, dizziness, restlessness, anxiety, weakness, hyperglycemia, and prolonged use can cause plasma volume depletion, hemorrhage, intestinal, uh, hepatic, and renal necrosis. And dopamine, what are the action? 2 to 5 max per kg per minute increase the blood flow uh, like renal, uh, spine, coronary and cerebral. 5 to 10 max uh, increases uh, cardiac contractility without raising the heart rate on BP and it, it increases uh, cardiac output, uh, direct stimulation of cardiac uh, beta 1 receptors, indirect cardiac stimulation through the release of noradrenaline stored in the cardiac sympathetic nerves. 10 to 20 max Vasoconstriction increases vascular resistance and tachycardia. And what are the uses? Uh, we are using in low cardiac output uh, situation, hypotension, poor peripheral perfusion when adequate CVP and stable rhythm. And what are the precautions we need to take for the dopamine? Uh, tachycardia can cause tachycardia, increase O2 demand of myocardium. Arrhythmias, usually SVT and VT, hypertension, peripheral vascular uh, constriction, need CVP if dose is more than 5K, 5 max. Local ischemia or necrosis if extravasation of peripheral IV and inactivated in alkaline solutions. So, dobutamine. What are the actions of uh, dobutamine? Synthetic uh, catecholamine acts directly on the beta receptors, not dependent on noradrenaline stores. Increases cardiac contractility, improves cardiac output, increases uh, uh, heart rate with mild peripheral dilation of the vascular bed, increases cardiac output in cardiogenic shock, decreases pulmonary capillary pressure and systemic vascular resistance. And what are the uses? Hypoperfusion, if associated with the increased systemic vascular resistance, severe congestive heart failure, cardiogenic shock, especially if caused by the cardiomyopathy and uh, decreases peripheral vascular resistance. What are the precautions or side effects? It can cause tachycardia, tachyarrhythmias, ectopic beats, nausea, vomiting, hypertension, tissue necrosis and ischemia in case of extravasation. Milrinol. This is a selective inhibitor of phosphodiesterase 3, an enzyme responsible for catalyzing the breakdown of CMP, cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Action. It is uh, inhibition of phosphodiesterase 3 resulting a positive ionotrope reaction and vasodilation and after load reducer it is called enodilation uh, bronchodilator slight increases in heart rate increase contractility vasodilation in skeletal muscles congestive heart failure this is while uh, when we are using this in congestive heart failure decreased cardiac output and increase the filling pressure Post cardiac surgery, Mildrenol has uh, 20 minutes onset and 4 to 6 hours of offset half life. So, what are the precautions we need to take care of? It can cause hypotension, consider a fluid bolus before initiating, and uh, arrhythmias incompatible with uh, frucimide precipitation. Means if you are mixing with uh, lasix, can cause precipitation. 
and isoprenaline. What are the actions? Beta adrenergic agonist increase heart rate, increase the atrial ventricular conduction, and increase cardiac contractility, increase myocardial auto consumption, cardiac output increases if CVP adequate. Pulse pressure increases because uh, diastolic pressure falls with the dilation of blood vessels and bronchodilation. And when we are using this, generally uh, now used as a short term emergency treatment of heart block or severe bradycardia and bradycardia with poor perfusion. And what are the precautions? This may compromise coronary perfusion because it has no alpha adrenergic effects and decreases diastolic pressure. So if there is diastolic pressure decrease, of course, uh, the coronaries are getting blood while the diastolic phase. So if it is dropping, the coronary perfusion will compromise. Increase myocardial auto demand by increasing contractility and heart rate. Increased rate may further reduce coronary perfusion by decreasing diastolic filling time. Not given in arrest situation, arrhythmia, hypotension, sweating, and headache. These are the side effects. So this is uh, glycerol uh, trinitrate, tridyl, NTG. So the action of this medicine is systemic venous and arterial vasodilator. Pulmonary vasodilation relaxes stiff uh, ventricles, acts on veins and coronary vessels. Uh, potent coronary vasodilator uh, decreases venous return and therefore uh, decreases LV work. So this is uh, uh, we are using for the hypertensive crisis and uh, for the MI patient to dilate the coronary vessels and uses LV failure. Precautions of the trial NTG is uh, tachycardia, care with administration, hypotension, headache, flushing, dizziness, and hypothermia. Propanolone. The action is uh, non-selective beta blocker of cardiac and respiratory adrenal receptors. Uh, competes with adrenaline and noradrenaline for available beta receptor sites. Uh, it blocks the cardiac effect of beta adrenergic stimulation causing decreased heart rate and decreased myocardial uh, irritability and decreased force of contraction, depressed the automaticity of sinus node and the ectopic pacemaker, uh, higher doses depress cardiac function, also blocks the bronchodilatory effect of uh, catecholamines and decreased plasma levels of uh, free fat acid. Fatty acid. Promotes uh, sodium retention, decreased platelet uh, aggregability. Uh, renin activity suppressed along with the beta blocker effects caused by de uh, cause decreased cardiac output causing hypotension. So we know that the medicines ending with the lol is always blocking. We just keep it in mind. So what are the uses? Hypotension, arrhythmia and uh, thyrotoxic crisis, obstructive cardiomyopathy, MI, tachycardia associated with uh, digoxin toxicity, anesthesia, and uh, hypertrophic uh, subiotic stenosis. And what are the precautions? Priorities rash, allergy, fever, respiratory distress, CNS effects like psychosis, sleep disturbances, depression, confusion, agitation, fatigue, syncope, weak, drowsy, hallucinations, CVS effects, palpitation, bradycardia, AV block, hypotension, tachyarrhythmias, acute congestive cardiac failure. Visual disturbance, tinnitus can happen, and GI uh, effects like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, hypoglycemia, uh, dyspnea, laryngeal or bronchospasm, skeletal muscle vasoconstriction. So thank you for uh, your time and I hope you understood something about the cardiovascular system and the inotropic use. See you next time with another class. Bye bye. <music>